Hello, Fenton here. This is Factorio Over Explained. Episode 4, we've got a basic setup going. What we need to do now is we need to start seriously scaling up. We want lots of iron. And I think we're going to build our first uh, smelting column. So we're going to have a very large section devoted to just smelting iron ore into iron plates for us. But before we do that, we need to start building the stuff to do that. And so I'm going to just spend a little bit of time over here automating some of the stuff that we need. Uh, that we're going to need plenty of, like uh, belts and inserters and the furnaces will not be a problem. So Let's make five assembly machines, and while that's going, I'll just uh, do my try and remember to do my spiel about if you're having a if you're having a good time, if you're enjoying it, make sure to let me know with a, a like or a comment, and if you want to subscribe as well to see more Factorio stuff in the future, that would be great. Right, so we need belts. Are oh, very simple. They're just iron plates and iron gear wheels. So we could finagle something like this here with some chests and the like. Uh, I made some quickly some more ammo so I could destroy these wooden chests because I am never going to use a wooden chest ever again. Kaboom! Look at it explode somehow. Okay. Automating belts. Let me move this around. The way I like to do it is I like to put it three squares apart and because I'm an idiot I can't count three squares with my eyes so I put an assembly machine down because I know that's three squares wide and do this and uh, give me a few more chests as well and then I put some chests like this so that uh, this one can make the belts if I'm going too fast unfortunately you've skipped some episodes and if you're already confused as to what's happening, then uh, I suggest you go back to the earlier section of the curriculum. The curricula. So we need iron in here and iron in here, but we also need gear wheels in here. And obviously we'd like to keep this here because we want to keep yeah, red science going along. And while that's going, I'll just... Uh, plow ahead on some of these researches. It's not hugely important what they do. Um, I'm going to do electronics because I'd like to possibly get fast inserters and electric energy distribution. Um, unless you know the exact tech tree, it's hard to exact, It's hard to really focus. Um, the best way to approach it as from a beginner standpoint is really to just do everything that needs red science packs first and then move on to everything that needs red and green science packs once you've sorted that out. If it's military based you could probably leave it without uh, the biters on because it's just unnecessary resources that you're spending on something that you're never going to need. Um, so we'll just we'll just plow through with some of these and they're quite short uh, researches as well so it's not hugely important. Right so if we put all of our iron in here and uh, do this, so that will get the iron into both places if I supply it with electricity properly. And then press Q to take the thing. Some of the iron gear wheels can go in here, which then need to go in there, like that. And some of them can go up here. Uh, iron gear wheels are fast, um, but they're not that fast, especially when it comes to belts belts, you produce quite a lot of belts, and then we'll output these belts to a chest. I don't want to entirely fill this chest with belts. That would be huge overkill. So what you can do here within the chest inventory is limit parts of the inventory so it cannot be filled by machines, and that simply just blocks off. So we'll limit our chest to 500. That should be more than enough. If we limited it to like this, suddenly this inserter would stop working with the uh, waiting for space in destination error, as we've seen before. Uh, we'll do 500 because the transport belts have an item stack size of 100, so 5 slots, 500 belts. Cool. 
Uh, inserters, to be fair, I'm actually not going to automate inserters because that involves making electronic circuits and we don't need to do that. Um, and the same with underground belts and splitters. We will need some of these for what I'm about to accomplish, but uh, we can make these by hand as and when they're needed. We're just going to bust this out as quickly as we possibly can to get iron moving. Once we've got iron moving, then we're sorted. Right, so we need... <coughs> excuse me. A bit of a cough straight after dinner. Uh, let's go and get some more iron plates. Actually, we'll destroy this now. We should have enough iron plates here to get something going. Even if it's not fully done. This particular cliff is a real pain. But uh, what can you do about it, eh? And we'll take some copper as well so that we can handcraft electronic circuits should we need to. So suddenly now our inventory, our crafting is like, yeah, you can make loads of stuff, mate. You're good. So the first thing that we'll do is we will set up in much the same way that we've set up the coal. Uh, we'll set up a belt of iron ore to be moved around. Um, I like to do it by uh, especially in the early game when you're using small electric poles. I like to do one row of them completely back to back. Like this. Then your belt goes through the middle and then the next set, I don't have enough on me, let me just build some more. The next set goes uh, two at a time. And that gives you just enough space for all for power poles to hit everything with electricity. And it also gives you some space for some lights as well. But I've got the Afraid of the Dark mod on, so that won't be... This is as dark as it gets. Come on. I'll get another five going as well, just so I don't have to wait again in the future, should this travesty befall us. I'm going to just quickly plop these stone furnaces down to get rid of all this iron... to get rid of a bunch of this iron ore and coal in my inventory. And then there will be some backup iron plates there just in case, as I say, the worst befalls us and we run out, which might happen. Uh, so if you do now two and then a single space, you'll see that the power poles can reach those squares and then hit everything. Ta-da! I was going to think about sending it this way, which is why I cleared some trees before I started recording, but it's fine. Okay, iron ore is sort of happening here. Very slowly, but obviously we've not covered a huge amount of the uh, patch, and we will. How's this doing? 194 already, that's nice. How's iron doing? Fine. How's copper doing? More than fine. Good. So we know that to smelt you need iron ore, or at least a raw ingredient, and you need fuel. So how should we do this? <coughs> we could, using the principle that we learnt last time about how a belt is made up of uh, two distinct lanes, seems like the most simple and efficient way to, would be to have iron ore on one side, and have copper, uh, copper, coal on the other side. I'm saying that a lot, aren't I? I'm getting coal and copper mixed up for some reason. And having coal on the other side. How are we going to do that? That is a good question. If we could do that, we'd be sorted, right? Because an inserter would just pick up iron and coal, feed it into the stone furnaces, and that would be that. There's a very handy way you can do this, and I'm just trying to think if I want to go all in on explaining it. Because it also involves splitters and undergrounds, which I haven't talked about. I won't then, I won't. I will do it in a very basic manner. I'll set up another five uh, coal miners here. In much the same way, with the two spaces in between. Obviously this makes this tileable then, you can see that these if I'd done this bottom way the same, this distance between here and here would also match. 
it doesn't. So we'll fix that later on. I'll do some tidy up of some things. Well, let's get some coal as well, shall we? So if we get some coal and also some iron, let's move the coal up a bit. There's no reason to uh, waste quite so much space. This is all done now as well. The coal is only outputting onto this bottom half of the belt because obviously the ins uh, the output of these miners are onto this half of the belt. So half of the problem is already solved for us. There's a couple of ways we could do this. The most is simple and efficient way, which is actually not the best in this particular scenario. Although it is fine. If two belts meet like this, then obviously uh, this half, this belt, is going to drop onto this side of the belt. And this, oh god, when I zoom in it makes the sensitivity really different. And then this belt is going to drop onto this half of the, of the belt, this lane, and it's going to keep moving on like this. So this would just solve it for us, as you can see. Very simple, very easy. So then now we can put our smelting furnaces down like this. Uh, make me a few inserters. We could use burner inserters for this, but there's no real need anymore to ever use a burner inserter. I'm just picking researchers at random. As I say, this playthrough is going to be so slow that there's real, really no need to rush anything. Uh, once you've got a science set up, once we've once we get to green, we'll pick a few specific green things we want straight away. But then after that, you know, we need to move the electricity over this way, which we can do. Simple enough. Whoa! The belt moved me. To a bigger house. Uh, no, that's the Simpsons, if you're that young. Which you probably are. We'll do it. Uh, no, that's not going to work, because we need inserters on the other side as well. This is fine. It's a bit messy, but it is, it is fine. It's going to be messy at the start. So the inserters are smart enough to know what the uh, furnace needs. And when it doesn't need anything, it never, ever, ever will get stuck picking up coal to put it in, thinking, oh, I'll pick up coal next, and then it doesn't need coal, and then the last bit of iron ore runs out, but the arm still has coal in it, so it doesn't ever do anything ever again. That never, ever, ever happens. Thankfully, you don't ever need to worry about that. Once this drops to four, it will just put another coal in, go back, and then put more iron ore in. And it's just going to do that forever, as long as we keep supplying it. It's sorted. So let's do some more of this. Let me put inserters on my toolbar. Drag the electricity. This would be a good example to show how the poles are smart enough to uh, know where the p they need to go for everything to get electricity. It's not symmetrical or anything, so I'm actually going to undo it. <laughs> and just put them at the top of each pair of uh, inserters. I wish I'd done this a bit tidier now. There we go, that's better. We could leave this. But it makes sense currently. Give me loads of yellow inserters. I'm going to need yellow inserters for a very long time, so I'll just use my entire inventory at this point. I'm also going to click drag some coal into these furnaces just so. Let's do some quick math, shall we? Oh no, you're saying. No, it's fine. Uh, one of these can output one iron ore in two seconds. That is defined over here. Ooh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what the? Uh, that's defined over... God, UI, please. Over here with the mining speed of 0 0.5 a second. So that's one every two seconds. So, 15 of these will fill a belt. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's fine. It's not quite a full belt, but it, it's 12 It's 12, furnace, uh, 12 miners, 6 a second. This uh, has a crafting speed of 1. 
So that means it will take one iron ore every 3.2 seconds. So uh, if we're making six a second, oh, hang on, no, wait, back, go back a step. <laughs> Excuse me. This takes one iron ore every 3.2 seconds, so that is one. One second is. Th oh my god! What? 3.2 a second. It uses 0 0.3125 of an iron ore every second. So six into that. So we can already supply just over 19 iron ore, uh, iron, uh, stone furnaces with what we've got here. Uh, the coal shouldn't be a problem. It uses the coal on such a less, such more, such less frequency. Uh, you have to, excuse me, my brain seems to be just dying right in front of our eyes. Uh, you're witnessing a da the downfall of a man apparently having a stroke. Uh, basically, we could put a lot more stone furnaces down f with what we've got. I'm not going to worry too much about the ins and outs of that now that I've said it. Uh, I'll go into it when I build a proper, when we do, when we do proper smelting columns. I will expand this slightly, and I will output the iron onto a lane. Now, outputting onto a belt is something we've not done yet. Out outputs onto belts, the inserters target... Oh, I don't have any of those. If you don't have any... If you press Q on an item that you don't have any of, uh, I haven't got a good example of that because I've just built some. Uh, the miners, for example, you get this little ghost symbol on your cursor. This little dude here. Spoopy. Um, and you can place it down, but it is a ghost version. It is a plan. It is, I want to do this. And eventually, once you get construction robots, your construction robots will fulfill your plans automatically. Uh, but in the short term you can use it for planning and distance and stuff like that. Um, but again, only if you if you press Q on something you don't have, it does it for you straight away. And if you hold shift while you're planning, when you've got something in your cursor, it'll put a ghost version of it down. So it is, it is useful. Uh, right, as I was saying, the inserter only places on the outside of a belt. Only, only ever will it do that. Which does mean we're only using one half of this belt. So everything at the bottom here is... I mean, it's going to get full up anyway because, you know, it's not going anywhere. Um, but your throughput on a belt can be limited by that. Uh, and there's not really a good way to solve it currently, especially because these are so full. Um, but it's fine, because these have an internal buffer of one stack, which is 100 iron plates. This will obviously limit us to doing 7.5 iron plates a second, because obviously our belt speed, the yellow belts are 15 items a second, and we're only using half the belt. But that's fine. So we can actually think about moving all of this now. This finished, this used all of the iron plates, and it gave us 426 belts on top of the ones we were using already and uh, you can see up here that our tech stopped at 93% because we had no more um, iron plates to make the gear wheels that are needed in the automation science pack so but we've got automated iron now, so we can make a whole bunch of stuff that just needs iron. So we'll do that here quickly. So now we don't need the buffer for... we don't need a buffer chest to make this. We can have iron gear wheels going in from this iron, and iron plates coming straight in 
from the belt as well. This inserter moves the finished gear wheels to here and then this can output into a chest as before. Again, 500 should be more. Let's do a thousand. We've got so much iron now. And then we'll find one place to put this power pole that's going to do everything. It's not going to work, is it? I mean, it would work if I wanted to put this chest somewhere this chest somewhere different, but it's not, so I'll put this uh, there. There we go. Everything. Everything has power except that. The most important. It's a mess, as I say. The small electric poles, their supply area is so small and their wire reach is so short that you kind of just have to fudge it for now. Good. And this will barely use any. This takes two iron plates every half a second, but because the crafting speed of the machine is half speed as well, it's two iron plates uh, every second. Which actually, if you look, is not fast enough for this inserter to deal with. This inserter is currently only moving one plate at a time. There are research upgrades you can get to improve that. So, in fact, we need two arms here to get this working at a decent speed. Still not quite there, is it? Oh no, now the output's full. Okay, so now that's fine. Uh, and then this is just... This is using one iron gear wheel in half a second, but the crafting speed of the machine is half, so it's one iron gear wheel every second. Which this is doing... Exactly. So why isn't this... Oh, the output is full. That's right, that's right, because it makes two transport belts in half a second, times the crafting speed, so two iron belts in a second. We've got the same problem here. So in fact, what we should do, if we really want to make this efficient as possible, is do this. And then we can make each one of these 500 space instead. There we go. Now we're crafting at roughly as fast as possible. Roughly. Providing electricity is keeping up, yes. You know what? This won't hurt, so let's just do it. Cool. We got lots of belts now. Belts is sorted. I'm desperate to get this coal out of my inventory, so again, I'm just gonna. There'll always be some space in these because the arms only fill to three or four of the items. But we've actually got so much iron now that these middle ones are completely backed up. Um, these are working because they're placing them here in this space, and these arms are probably just picking them up straight from the straight from the uh, arm itself. They're not ever placing it on the belt. The arms are just swapping over. And then obviously this one is depositing because this arm is moving quite a lot. So it, it is going down, but it's it's still more iron than we need currently. But that's the thing with Factorio, is it's always more iron than you need until suddenly it's nowhere near enough iron. Let's put the science back on, shall we? We've got two labs. We should uh, we should speed this up, I think. That was a terrible way to do it. Let's keep moving the iron down the line. And do uh, summation science packs with a gear wheel and some copper plates. So the same principle applies. We can do... We'll go this way. There's no reason for it to not go that way. We want iron gear wheels made out of the plates, and then we want science packs made out of the gear wheels. We need a chest here to fill with copper. We need an arm to put the copper in, and then we need an arm to move the finished products into the lab. And we need some power poles for everything. And we should go and get some more copper. How's electricity doing? So, great, basically. Electric mining drills are fairly power heavy this stage in the game. Um, but still, not much to worry about here at all. Electricity wise, we can just keep plowing on. So now, production is ramping up again. I've got five science packs in my inventory for some reason. 
Alright, that's, that's steel processing done. Oh, let's build the steel axe, which just increases our mining speed, so that just means we can demolish things, including trees, slightly quicker. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so we need to really do this, but with uh, with copper. To try and get some a copper line going so that we can then maybe build some electronic circuits automatically. Oh, what did what new stuff did we get? Oh, we can Oh, I learned steel smelting. Uh you can turn iron into steel. We won't need steel for a little bit. I want to get the basics of the base sorted before we do that. And the basics of the base will involve a full smelting column of iron. Uh but obviously we needed some our starter iron to do that. When you're a bit more seasoned, you would probably just skip this step and, and expand what we were doing before. So expand this setup and expand the setup we had here of um, furnaces and miners to just build a much larger version of this straight away and go with that. Because although this is good, it's not ideal, uh, obviously we could do exactly the same on the other side and bring that belt of iron here like this and bung it into that so obviously the whoops not that one the output from these two lanes would be dropped onto this and then move its way down um, there is a slightly better way to do it which is to uh, basically invert the inputs and outputs here that I've done Sorry, I had to cough. Uh, to invert the inputs and outputs that I've done, so you're bringing in your coal and your iron ore from the outside, and you're depositing your iron plates onto the inside, so because uh, an inserter only ever places on the outside, you will have a full belt naturally, because this inserter will... I keep pressing control too. This inserter will place it on this half, and this inserter will place it on this half, so you will have two lanes full straight away so then providing you've got a full lane providing you've got enough iron ore and coal coming in you can have an entire smelting column output one full lane of iron ore so at the very top it would just be a full lane of iron ore and that is your ultimate goal uh, in terms of getting automation sorted is just to have these smelting columns with lanes of your raw products or your intermediate products, I should say. Okay. Let me just uh, finish off this episode then by talking about the map, because I haven't talked about the map yet, and I don't think I've gone into it. I've made the conscious effort to not press M. You can press M to open up your map screen in a Command & Conquer style. Squirrel wheel zooms you in and out. You can see here, roughly, the outline of the base. You can zoom in and see you can see around you as a player a certain extent um, and then any further than that there's the fog of war where you can just sort of roughly see what's going on and then there's the black complete shadow where you have never been you've never seen so if we uh, leave this and walk up you can also see the minimap view here as we move over to the black here we will expose it and we can see what's going on some uranium here for nuclear fuel which we will get to so here we go we're starting to expose some of this area over here but obviously now we've left this area we can't see what's going on we can see a rough outline of what it was the very last time we saw it which when you're not playing with when you're playing with the biters off that's obviously not going to change unless like a train crashes or something and explode somehow. I don't know if you can make a nuclear explosion with a train crash if it's full of nuclear fuel. I don't actually know that. I should find that out. Um, so you can see a rough outline here of the belts and the power poles and the boilers but it's it's just it's nothing more than just shapes really. You'd have to... Uh, there is an option here for recipe icons amongst many 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 other options like electric power networks so you can see the structure but if you turn this on you can actually see where the wires are traveling 
Uh, turret coverage we don't need because we're not playing with bots. Logistics networks we haven't got yet. Trains we don't have. Player names, it's just me. And rail signal states, obviously. We don't have trains yet either. Worker robots we haven't got at all. Tags, you can tag the map. Henlo. Give it an icon. Uh, the going into the icons at this point is a bit much because this is every icon in the game for every single technology that exists in the game, including any mods you've got active. Uh, so this can be a bit overwhelming to suddenly go, oh my goodness me, look, look all of these inserts and all of these belts and all of this power and what the hell are these? And barrels of stuff. Fluids. Um, but I'll just, I'll just put a, a, an F Fenton here as a tag. There we go. And I'll leave that there forever. Um, you can also hover over ore patches to see exactly what's going on. 294,000 iron ore. And this will obviously update in real time as our miners work. Uh, there's another coal patch down there. 1.3 million. Well, pa ore patches get... They don't get bigger, but they get uh, denser the further away from your spawn that you start. Uh, so uh, an iron ore patch, whoops, this iron ore patch here, two uh, 294,000, one like this far out, you probably imagine it having two or three million at that point. It might not be much bigger, but this sheer amount of iron ore on each square. So if we go quickly, go back. Uh, uranium doesn't hurt you in the default game. It just exists. There we go. You can't mine it by hand because it requires sulfuric acid. Even though I clicked the mouse enough there to make it make a sound effect. Interesting. That's a bug. Uh, yeah, if we go back to the copper, for example, we can see here that the amount on each square, 2,172, you know, three-digit numbers, even in the very middle where it's the densest, it's never really topping more than 2,500. So... Um, as we get out more and more into the world, which we'll definitely need to do to bring in the real raw resources, and that's when we start getting trains, when the game starts getting exceptionally good, you'll find that you'll have maybe 10, 15,000 ore in a single square. That doesn't obviously make the miner go any faster, it's just going to make that miner last a lot longer this will, you know, these are these look like big numbers now, expected resources, this one especially, 17,000, this one will last a long time, but these numbers here, I keep pressing control 2, I feel like at one point it was control 2 and I changed it this 1,400, it sounds like a lot, but because it's also at the top end of the belt and it's more likely to act actually be working, this 1,400 is not going to last a huge amount of time we already filled up the this. Look at this. That's automation for you. There we go. Right. Desperately trying to get rid of some coal. I will call that a video um, and say that we talked about basic smelting automation and the map, I suppose. Is there anything else in the map that I should I can zoom out, of course. Uh, I don't think so. Without the biters on, there's not much more to talk about with the map, and even then, it would just be your pollution cloud and biters. Don't let the pollution cloud hit the biters, or they're going to attack you. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to try and make these three a week. Monday, Wednesday, no, Monday, Thursday, Saturday, or Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, or something like that. So please let me know if you're enjoying it and if you're playing along and if you've got any questions, anything obvious that I may have missed. Um, there is a lot, obviously, to go through and I'm hoping that I am at least hitting those notes. And when we come back next time, I guess we'll have to try and do the same thing with the copper and, talk and do some green circuits. I might just even get this sorted with the copper off camera so that I can go straight into talking about green circuits because green circuits needs not only iron and copper but it also needs the copper turned into an Im intermediate product the copper cable and it runs at a strange ratio 
so you can make two copper cables, but this needs three copper cables per craft time, even though the craft times are the same. So we get to talk about building ratios and things like that, which is interesting. Anyway, thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.